Solving systems of equations is a really, really important skill in all of your math classes. It shows up for the first time in Algebra 1, but it continues in pretty much every course thereafter. So this is a really important idea that you're going to want to focus on in your first time through. A system of equations is two or more equations that contain the same variables. In Algebra class, you'll probably only see, see two variables that are both raised to the first power. But when you get into advanced algebra or about algebra 2, you might start seeing things with x squareds, y squareds. Sometimes you have three or even four equations, not just x and y, but x, y, z, and w, or something like that. But for algebra, most of the time we're just talking about two equations that have x and y in both of them. The solution to a system of equations is the solution in both or all original equations. It's the point where the lines intersect. What that means is that if I take my x and y pair that I think is the solution and I substitute them into both original equations, both original equations will come out true. They'll come out as equalities. That's how I'll know if my work is correct. The other way I could check my work is by doing a graph and see if my solution point is where the lines cross. You'll get into that a lot once you start doing some practice problems. When you're asked to solve these, there's four methods that are commonly used. The first method is to graph. You graph both lines, see where they cross, and that's your solution point. If you're not a good grapher, don't worry, there's other options for you. Substitution is where you get one variable isolated by itself and then substitute that expression into the other equation. That's what substitution looks like and it's really commonly used when you have equations that are both in y equals mx plus b form. A third method is called elimination. And that's where you look at the coefficients in front of x and y, and you try to get coefficients in your two equations that are additive inverses. So like if my equation 1 has 3x plus 4y or something, I want my equation 2 to have negative 3x. That way, when I work with the equations together, my positive 3x and negative 3x would be eliminated when I added them together. That's what an additive inverse is. The fourth method is something that you don't see until you're more advanced in math classes, probably not until you're advanced algebra or algebra 2 class. So I'm going to cross that off. We're not going to be going over that in the algebra 1 course, but you will see that in your future. So if you're a good grapher, this might be the one you choose. If you're good at using algebra, like you're pretty accurate when you write out all of your math homework and you don't lose negative signs, you're pretty good with fractions, stuff like that, substitution or elimination might be your favorite method. However, it's best to know how to do all of the methods so that in case you get to your math test and you have like a brain fart and you forget how to do substitution, you're still able to use either elimination or graphing.